Hello, hello everyone. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. How is everybody doing? As for me, thank God I have been uh, doing good. Uh, God has blessed me abundantly. It uh, was a wonderful work for me. <coughs> All right, now I come to you with a, a plan to start Bible study. And this part of this Bible study is uh, uh, found in um, a book of Proverbs. Oh, Proverbs? Everybody loves Proverbs. <laughs> we have been reading every uh, 30, uh, every month since uh, the, the chapters are 20, uh, 30 first, uh, uh, 31 chapters. A lot of people have been reading from uh, Proverbs uh, 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 a day, a uh, chapter a day. Uh, it's the most read book uh, uh, from the Bible uh, because of this arrangement and it is richness um, and uh, uh, principle uh, guidance uh, for life, the, pr uh, the principle which God, uh, which people uh, gather from the learning from the book of Proverbs has been uh, wonderful for many uh, people, uh, had been helpful and uh, a whole lot of people got uh, um, Hop from the book of Proverbs, and uh, the matter of fact, uh, been from the book of uh, 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 Psalms. <coughs> uh, now we are going to start from the book of Proverbs, chapter thirty. And the reason I chose I cho chose the um, uh, Proverbs thirty was that because of its richness, it has all kinds of symbolic representations of. Uh, uh, using animals and people and all kind of um, things to uh, describe the heavenly kingdom, the kingdom of Christ Jesus. So I'm going to read it and uh, we'll start from there. And uh, it doesn't mean we are going to remain in the book of Proverbs 30 and going uh, there and again and again. But we have to compare spiritual things with script, uh, spiritual things. Uh, so... For sure, we go to uh, we will go to um, the book of Genesis uh, and um, other uh, uh, um, books there, and uh, even Revelation and a whole part of the Bible, because uh, we uh, we uh, study the Bible in the principle here a little and there a little. That's the principle. God has uh, you know um, uh, written the Bible in that in, the, in that form in that principle, from here, a uh, little here and a little there, uh, some here and some there. So we'll, we'll follow that principle and study uh, the uh, book of Proverbs, uh, as a matter of fact, the Bible. But first I have to read it and I'll, I'm going to ask you some questions from there for this week and uh, I'll be uh, asking you another questions uh, for the coming weeks. Uh, Proverb 30, chapter 30, uh, the words of Agur, the son of Jackie, even the prophecy, the man spoke unto Ethel, even unto Ethel and Ukko. Surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. I never learned wisdom, nor have the knowledge of the holy. Who has ascended up to heaven, or descended? Who has gathered the winds in his fist? Who has bound the waters in the garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put trust in him. Their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and still and take the name of my God in vain. I choose not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. There is a generation that curses their father, and does not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, 
and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The horse leech has two daughters crying, Give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied, yea, four things say not it is enough. The grave, the barren womb, the earth that's not filled with water, and the fire that says not it is enough. The eye that mocks at his father and despises to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pluck it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, for which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wickedness. For three things the earth is disquieted, and for four which it cannot bear. For a servant when he reigns, and a fool when he is filled with meat. For an odious woman when she is married, and an handmaid that is heir to her mist mistress. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, yet make they their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet go they forth all of them by bands. The spider takes hold with her hands, and is in king's palaces. There be three things which go well, yea, four are comely in going. A lion which is strongest among the beasts, and turns not away for any. A greyhound, and he goeth also, and a king against whom there is no rising up. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast Thought evil lay thine hand upon thy mouth. Surely the churning of milk brings forth better, and the wringing of the nose brings forth blood. So the forcing of wrath brings forth strife. Now this is the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 30. I used the old King James Bible, the 1611 translation. Uh, because uh, I, I use it because it is more faithful to the Greek, to the Greeks and to the Hebrew uh, rather than to uh, 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 when it is compared to the new uh, uh, the modern translations. So I prefer all the time to use uh, the kingdoms. And there are old old words which are um, uh, very uh, difficult to uh, to understand for some of you guys. Anyway, I'll, I'll just use the modern word when I try to uh, explain uh, uh, in the chapters. Now I'm going to ask you some questions. What is the meaning uh, of the name Agur? Agur, each name in the uh, Biblical Hebrew, each name has a meaning. And God has uh, something to do with their names when he's, uh, he says, call his name Emmanuel, call his name Jesus, call his name John. Uh, you know, um, so uh, he always, you know, told, uh, God always told those people to name their children and to give them names. So uh, the, the, this book, especially the book of Proverbs, the names, uh, the names are meaningful and they are very, very uh, important pieces to understand the whole, um, uh, the whole chapter or the whole book. So, what is the name, uh, uh, the mean, mean, uh, Agur means, and what Jake means, and why God used two words at one time, 
uh, for example, in uh, chapter 1, verse 1, spoke unto Ethel, even unto Ethel. You know, Ethel, Ethel, it looks like a name, and uh, he used it twice. Why God used it twice? Ethel, Ethel. And what's the meaning of Ethel and Ukal? Um, why uh, is um, uh, Mr. Agur uh, saying um, he's a um, uh, foolish man? Uh, in uh, verse 2, I am more, more, I am more brutish than any man and have not the understanding of a man. He says he doesn't have understanding of the man. Why he said that? I mean, doesn't he have understanding? Doesn't he have um, a knowledge about God? But he says there he doesn't have understanding. And in verse 3 he says, I learned, I neither learned wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy. Why he said, I didn't learn and I don't have the understanding of the holy one. That's uh, the understanding of God. What does he mean when he says in verse 3, and now he's asking a question in chapter 4. Who has ascended up into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the winds in his fists? Who has bound the waters in the garment? Who has established all the indices of the earth? He's asking, what are these questions? What are they referring to? I mean, what are these questions are referring to? God willing, I'm going to ask you more questions as we go on studying uh, the book of Proverbs for now, it is enough, and um, uh, try to answer the, uh, these questions or try to com contemplate upon them and go find out um, answer from the Bible. We are not going to go out around somewhere to find out answers. We have to get it from the Bible, just from the Bible. What you try is, don't even depend on the commentaries or, or something else, but compare scriptures with scriptures, spiritual things with spiritual things, and find out the answer for these uh, basic questions. And try to use um, uh, concordance to, to find the, the meaning of the names and uh, come up with the meaning of the names. And the rest, just you can compare and contrast, find uh, the answer in the Bible itself. So we are going to have a deep, uh, uh, profound Bible uh, uh, study, and I hope we are going to learn a whole lot, and God is going to help us. Until then, uh, God be, rich, uh, be with you and richly bless you. Uh, uh, take care. Bye.